Hello everybody and welcome to Music Industry Insights Worldwide and today I have the amazing Casper with me. How are you Casper? I'm good, I'm not too bad. It's pretty foggy around Cardiff today. Um, mm. Wales but that's standard, what do you expect? Wow, uh, it's not much better in London honestly. So yeah, I'll bless you and thank you for coming on the show today. I hope you no, feel the you. same. So tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, what you do and where you're from. So my name's Casper. Um, my brother, he, him. I'm based up in Cardiff in Wales um, and I grew up in kind of rural Wales um, and moved to the city about three years ago because I wanted to pursue, pursue a career in music if yeah. if that's really a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I started up a punk band when I was 15 wow. um, called Talgate and I'm still in that punk band. Um, and then... The punk band that I'm in is very much about kind of angry, queer, liberation, like. <sighs> and then on the other side of things, I'm doing this. Uh, I've got a project called Transform Music, where I'm basically training up and providing guidelines to music venues all across Wales um, to help them become more um, trans inclusive and understand trans safeguarding better. Um, so I've got the... I get my frustration out in the evenings with the gigs and yeah. then in the day I'm a little bit more kind and proactive. <laughs> Brilliant, well done. So it's kind of like, um, so do you do initiatives and training and educational programmes? Tell us a little bit more about the projects. So Transform, um, my project with Beacons Cymru, kind of formed, um, it formed as an idea originally. I just I just knew I wanted to make the music scene yeah. Um, but there's there's a there's a huge lack of representation, 100%. and I wondered where that came from. Um, I wondered what the obviously it's it's easy to just say well it's just because of you know general underrepresentation of trans people and and um, the marginalised status. But I was wondering what what barriers are really keeping yeah. that that division, keeping that underrepresentation up yeah. in the music scene. So. Um, I was lucky to get some funding from the Outsane Fund, um, which is through Anthem Cymru. Um, Anthem Cymru, a really great organisation yeah. in Wales um, and fund a lot of grassroots music projects. Right. So I got this funding and I started, um, I started doing research into trans people's experiences across the UK, well, England and Wales at least. Yeah. Um, and the research was for people that were working in the music industry, so trans and non-binary people working in the industry, so trans and non-binary. Yeah. Sorry. Go. So you're looking at professionals as well as performers. Yeah, yeah, professionals, performers, and people that attend live music too. Um, oh. So they were there were two separate categories there, um, and it was quite general. It was trying to suss out what is what what are the barriers that people are facing, what are the positive and negative experiences people are facing, yeah. um, and the results of that work. There was some, I mean, there was there was some really really lovely um, parts of the research. It showed how important representation was, how much how much more empowered people felt through representation. Like, um, I don't have the figures on me right now, which is quite silly, but, um, you know, it, there was there was a clear, there's a clear kind of pattern of when people felt more, when people had seen more trans people performing, yeah. they felt more comfortable uh, presenting as, their, as, as the gender that they identify with in live music spaces from yeah. there on. Yeah, um, and and yeah, I think we could. There's something that we can probably a lot of us can relate to um, as uh, you know, trans and non-binary people is like, as when you see someone else do it, you think, well, I can do it too, of course. Um, of course. which is baseline of representation. But um, yeah, from this research, then um, what I found is that um, it, it was there was there was a lot of people that were experiencing harassment and assault in music venues and music venues were not uh a lot well I mean like uh, most people did not feel comfortable reporting I think like it was around like 59 percent of people okay. who were not didn't feel re safe reporting incidents to staff anyway but of those that did report whether 
they worked in the music industry or whether they were just attending live music, um, 25% of all people that did say that they reported an incident mm-hmm. of traffic said that no follow-up actions were taken at all a music venue yeah and I think it's the lack of education and understanding from and even from security venues that actually run events I think there's a whole bag of things discrimination lack of understanding even when you're reporting even to the police I think there's lots of different kind of things that go on yeah I think I think a big part of it is a fear as well of of police involvement um which is why venues kind of need to need to learn about dealing with it in-house yeah have this training and understanding like you said would be great it'd be really interesting to get the results of of some of the research that you've done actually because as you know I'm doing that with a PhD so any kind of information around that would be fantastic totally I'll send those over to you actually but I I, I would like to um I'd like to publish um the research findings anyway as well I think um I think there's some really important stuff in there yeah. um really stuff um and i think we're hoping now so in towards the end of january yeah um we're aiming to release the report then um it'll be so the report is more so it's more it's more so guidelines is is, but there's parts of the statistics and the research kind of amongst the guidelines for music venues um so that will be publicly available for anyone anyone that wants it it'll be out there for them um, whether it fails or not. Yes, we need this. And there's such a massive gap of data as well. When I'm looking at data sets, we often get male, female, and then non-binary, but there's just not that collection around trans at the moment. So that's another thing I'm pushing for is a UK-wide collection of this data about having an option in or out. We can kind Very of bit. mean that confidentiality if you want to. Because I remember I've had a chat with the music Musicians Union who've obviously done the Musician Census 2023 who are saying that at least 60% of people that identify as trans don't come out in the workplace. And again, that's due to harassment, stigma, discrimination, and lack of opportunities, because that does exist in the industry. And again, these things have to be addressed. So I'm so glad. I think it's a really difficult thing with the music industry is that um, we we work in a very non-traditional way. Yes. Uh, and most kind of workplaces you know they've got um you know you've got hr and you've got you've got all these kind of different levels and there's you know there's rules and there's and there's rights and workers rights and stuff but most of us are working freelance and not just freelance we're also just working so non-traditionally so it's so like sometimes i think the music industry can feel like more of a more of more of like a party almost playground than... yeah almost yeah I get what you're saying yeah yeah it really is. um and it can be it can be quite lawless yeah I think that's but... another thing but now we've got CESA that's coming out as well so that's also a great organization that's out there to protect all kind of discrimination and harassment and bullying which I think is such a great and, and a needed thing that we should have right now as well yeah, yeah. um there's yeah there's a lot there's a lot going on there but I think I think a majority of workplaces and employees and venues and people in the industry a lot of people they don't mean they don't mean harm um they don't mean to get it wrong they don't mean to do nothing because they want to do nothing um what I found from I did focus groups recently with music venues um with um with Sarah, one of my um someone that I work with, and we found that we found that these venues are just they're really scared of getting it wrong. Right. Um mm-hmm. and because they're afraid of getting it wrong, um they often find themselves I'm just kind of sick. Yeah, and they and they don't make any moves because they don't want to they make, just don't yeah, the don't right move. I totally get that actually and I think that's another way of looking at it is having that education having that training ensuring that we get pronouns right you know how we address Mm -hmm. people having the right toilets the situation for the toilets now I think um, there's a lot more awareness around being trans but I transitioned 12 years ago and I think I was discussing this with a lot of people that maybe what four years ago it was a taboo subject it wasn't even talked about it was something that we didn't really discuss and only the really the main reason why I do discuss it so much now 
in the music industry is because we don't have the role models and representation and education uh, for that to happen. Otherwise, in my normal general life, I don't just go around saying, or have a badge on saying I'm a trans woman. I don't think that's appropriate. And I don't, that's not how I, I live my life, you know, but I think we need this education. We need people to understand the issues, the barriers, the struggles, and to make it more inclusive and diverse because it's really not at the moment. It could be so much better. No, people people don't realize how rough it is out there. Yeah. Uh, because because we're so something something that the trans people and LGBT people in general are really really good at is just holding our heads up high yeah. and putting on a big confident costume basically like it's a costume confidence that and we and we sell it we sell it um but they're not seeing the amount that is going on in the background or in front of their eyes sometimes microaggressions are something that people really don't pick up on they don't even see it's happening they don't hear them but as as someone receiving a microaggression you know when you're receiving a microaggression trying to someone that that something is a microaggression is hard enough because they're like why does that matter and it's like and some well, of the discrimination that's so indirect as well that people don't even understand that and I think that's also another thing is I think sometimes people don't realize how harmful that can be to people going through dysphoria, going through, you know, all these different changes that might be going on and not feeling comfortable in your own skin. So there's all these things that come into play, right? So understanding totally. those things too is super important. I think it's really interesting the point you brought up about um, kind of, you know, in your day to day life, like not running around with a badge saying like I'm trans, but in yeah. music, really feeling that requirement almost to do yeah. so because yeah. representation I feel for it so much um I've always I've always kind of said like I don't I haven't chosen to be an activist but yeah yeah Absolutely. I kind of have to because if I if in music as a trans person if I don't if I don't take the lead in talking about my transness other people will take the lead in talking about my transness you know yeah. I think also it's about making sure that that's authentic and original from the communities in which we represent, because I think authenticity does count and people can see that. Um, mm -hmm. thing that does concern me sometimes is there has been a trend of recent times of where some people think it's cool to be a trans person when actually it's far from being cool. It's especially trans women. I think we're always in the firing line and it's not glitz and glam and it's not all what's right. On social media, and this is another thing where I like to share that real lived experience with people and say that it's not always what you see on TV or what you think it might be, you know. Mm, but also that there is too a, a massive, um, a massive problem with the kind of what do they call it trauma porn, they call it kind of, um, people mm -hmm. kind of you, you know, the media kind of just feeds these sob stories, it always has, yeah. it always has, it centers tragedy um when talking about trans narratives um and I think it's really important to it's you know in your in your creative spaces in in your music in your art in your performance to have this have it doesn't even have to be joy but have this other story going on it's like really? just by you show that you're alive yeah. and yeah. you can keep being alive and you can keep living and that you are multifaceted um and people people really don't get exposed to that you, you you'd be surprised i think like people would be surprised like how many people think that they've never met a trans person before mm -hmm. and all they know of trans people is like weird bbc documentaries and stuff that make us out like we're living <laughs> we're living a really strange lives and it's like yeah. no go to greg's every morning normal life <laughs> we are here yeah not aliens from another country and i think that's what people need to understand and, and i think more and more especially the younger generations get that but i do think sometimes maybe there's the older generations that struggle more with that understanding and that empathy and that relatability i guess but i think now more so the younger generations are more open and understanding and accepting of that which is great what's it like in wales because i'm here in london you know so we do have a big community of trans people here but God, what's it like in wales oh so i think the same I, I think cardiff is cardiff is um is very different yeah. to uh, a lot of parts of wales yeah. so rural wales living in rural wales um being trans 
Ist no, no, in der no. Ja. Ja, uh, um, yeah, so there, there, there is a lot of, um, I mean, I think in terms of like countryside, but also especially like the valleys and stuff, um, you know, mo most of my family are from the Ronda Valleys. And mm -hmm. sadly, the Ronda and most of our valleys have kind of been, um, you know, they've, they've kind of been, they've not really been very well looked after mm -hmm. in terms of education, opportunities and resources, um, which does mean that that they, they can sometimes, they can, their kind of general views of the communities, it can take a little bit longer yeah. to get where to get to where we're at in the city do you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um so there is there there is a misunderstanding in a lot of ways i think um a kind of fear of of, of change in yeah. a way to fear of new things yeah. um, but in cardiff itself cardiff has got a beautiful beautiful um trans and queer scene and it's only getting better um I think, you know, from from my perspective at least. So I've been out now, um, oh god, like eight years or something. I came out quite young. Um, so when when I was younger, as far as I'm aware, yeah, there, there wasn't much going on for trans people um, in Cardiff and in Wales. Yeah, uh, I mean, they, like you were saying earlier, like even even back then, like people just didn't speak about transness like if yeah. you said if you said trans you've got to explain it like when I came up to my mum yeah I had to say what what trans was to my mum and what that meant for me you know like it's not this like it was it wasn't something that's that is um as publicized as it is now mm -hmm. but um yeah Cardiff these days it's got a beautiful trans team we've got we've got so many like um um, so many like um, arts collectives of trans and queer people around here yeah. um, club nights that you know trans people put, is putting on for each other um, we've got a lot of kind of queer bands and stuff there's been I'm, I'm kind of seeing like a boom I'm seeing like a kind of like queer rock revolution happening in Cardiff um, yeah, it's really yeah um, and we've got like we have um we have a mutual aid collective called Trans Aid Cymru, who do some really, really great work. Um, and they're just they're just mutual aid, so it's all just kind of voluntary run, trans people helping other trans people. And they provide meals for people if people can't people can't get meals or, or struggle with cooking and stuff. Yeah. Um they donate towards people's um surgery fundraisers Cause... they give grants out like emergency grants so if you're struggling to pay your bills one month Fantastic. um trans aid will help pay your bills and stuff like really really good stuff happening and it's all just because the community's buckled up and just does it for each other we're not waiting for anyone else to Lovely. i love to hear that and how's that kind of impacted you in your career and you know having these kind of obstacles where you've had to move away from your original place of birth where you live with your family you've had to move to a big city where you've probably been on your own and have to find new friends build a new community for yourself how's that affected you um i think personally i, th I think i think it was it's the, it's the best thing ever for me like i couldn't live in in the country my whole life i love the countryside i do want to move back to the countryside <laughs> now i'm not gonna lie um i'm like always trying to find a little cottage that i can go rent and stuff oh. but um yeah, I it, I had to move up here. It's it's not it's not even a trans. It's nothing to relate to being trans. Really, it is just music. how it works. If you want, if you want a job, you've got, got to go. music kids, right? You can't expect it to come to you. Yeah, that, yeah. So I had I had to come up here, but um, I kind of entered Cardiff with a like a with a community that just met me with open arms, basically because. When I moved to Cardiff, um, it was 2020, just after lockdown. I didn't actually have anywhere to anywhere to go at that point. Right. Um, and uh, someone I knew it, called Iggy Rose took me in and I'm was like, "You yeah. you can stay up with us." Oh, um, and Iggy um, Iggy was a trans person um, and became my best friend. Um, 
and they just kind of introduced me to all of all of these trans people and everything they put me up for like three months told me like don't pay don't pay any rent and stuff like that just stay here until you can be off the ground um so it was an instant like I was instantly shown through Iggy that like um you know trans people we help each other out like we there is a community of us we do support each other yeah totally yeah there's there's that kind of unconditional love for I think between trans siblings is like even if even if I don't get along with you even if you really annoying or something like that you know like I am gonna I'm gonna be if, if you need to be protected then I will do what I can to protect you and I think that's how we kind of see each other yeah that's that solidarity so solidarity there and it's also about kind of making sure that we look out for each other and support each other because again there's that homelessness there's lack of finances there's a lack of opportunities there's a lack of jobs there's so many different things coming into play and, and even if you're from a multiracial background or a black background it's even harder than some people that are even in that white privilege you know so so many totally. things might come into play um that it's so nice to hear that we all support each other especially over in Wales as well and that there's that community of support and, and understanding that sounds fantastic mm-hmm. it, it, as well I think I think through music um the kind of the scene has become like oh, it's just become so much more trans inclusive when I turned up in um the music scene when I was 15 yeah. it was not like now it was it was weird people would say really weird things to you that would be working at these venues and stuff like that and you couldn't say anything about it because I'd be the only the only trans person about you know doing many times even now even in London right now it still happens you know um you have to keep showing up but I think because we're so small because we're such a small town um once we kind of did start putting our foot down and being like this is how you treat trans people this is how it's going to be from here on and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then more trans bands and stuff started kind of turning up and people were coming out um you can't you I don't think you could get away with with that kind of stuff anymore because we've kind of us like the trans punk bands in Cardiff have kind of we've we've really like put our foot down oh. and you can't you just there, there still is trans. Don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of transphobia. Um, it's got worse. still a lot. It's hate got crime. actually, yeah. Oh, so re- way worse. But in terms yeah. of like, in terms of venues, um, saying and doing things like themselves, you know, in terms of like just an open, overt bigotry, you would not be able to get away with, yeah, really anymore and- in our music scene. Which is good because we've we've only got like six music venues, so word gets around, you know. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that's fantastic! And the the work you're doing sounds amazing. You've got to keep that up. Has it affected your mental health? And have you felt discriminated at times in the industry? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's massively affected my mental health, and it still does, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. feeling, this feeling of being an outsider that's pledged on you is impossible to escape because even if even if my local community is used to me now and knows me now and they're good to me um when I'm outside of that bubble which is the music scene like the Welsh music scene I get faced with the reality of of what the rest of the world's like Um, and it's just this realization that um I, I probably can't really expect in my lifetime to ever not be treated like like an outsider because um, yeah. yeah because I wait you know you wake up in the morning and you, you'll be I, I live in a house with another trans musician like but so I should feel I should feel safe and good but I wake up and I go on my phone while I'm having coffee and I'm just it's just drivel mm-hmm. it's just loads of transphobic drivel you know it's everywhere um there's certain places you can't go to there's so you, you never know whether to whether to say when you go to a venue or when you when you've got a new opportunity you never know whether to say you're trans or not and it's really difficult because if I want to talk about my job yeah, yeah. I've got a mental trans part um but some what I what I find myself doing a lot of the time is if I meet someone 
in a venue or in a space or something and they ask me what I do for work I tell them that I work for I, I work for making venues safer for cis women right I, I, I always say yeah yeah I just I'm I'm helping help cis women out and stuff because I don't know if it's safe for me to mm. mention for me to out myself like well, that's not I'm, nice to feel like that it's 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 really it's put me in um Not it's put me in difficult situations before I think um yeah the feeling of of never being able to kind of just get on with it and not think about you know being outward and stuff mm. has really really got me down at times and and made me made me you know suicidal and stuff in the past too it's been um it I I'm seen I'm seen as very confident but it does. It's you. It, it does. Of course, it does. It, you can't see what that's going on. Important. Mm-hmm. Have the people that you can cry to about that that don't just go, "Oh, that must be so hard," but say, "It is so hard. I like, get it." I understand you, and I've been for it myself. So yeah, it's having that relatability, and I think that's another thing. It's empowering each other, and it's it's kind of supporting each other and helping each other, but being there for each other, like you said, you can't do it by yourself, and having that is super beneficial so I'm so glad you you have that because you really do need it I'm sorry to hear that as well like, that's why it's in music I think as well because when we're in our worst points yeah where do we, like, we usually stick our headphones on or blast some music or something yeah and so having having other trans musicians who are singing or creating music that you can relate to on that level and the level of talking about dysphoria or discrimination oh, yeah. or just life um that that heals that heals you we we use music to heal and we don't need people to be the same as us for them to heal us but as as trans people hearing another trans person's voice sometimes it's like oh my god what a relief you yeah. know Definitely. And what would you like to kind of see improve, like, over the next couple of years? I know you're doing your great kind of research, but what are the next steps after you've done that and what are you looking to do next? Um, so research phases are over right now um, and we're currently in the process of creating our training packages. So I'm I'm going to be getting up, what, six, six areas of Wales yeah. uh, will be offered training. Read to February for free as well, um, but I think this needs to be something that goes further than yeah. further than my personally. I, I think I think everywhere should be receiving this sort of thing. Um, I think it should be going further than just music venues. I basically like there's just two of us on the team. Yeah. Um, transform so it's you know it's a step it's baby steps basically but I think it should it should be going further than just uh, music venues getting training I think music organizations uh music businesses yes ev- you know everywhere outside of music too everyone should be receiving trans inclusivity training it should be if you want it you should be able to have it and it should be accessible Correct. and we need to be protected and people need to understand the issues that we go through some of the challenges some of the surgeries gender reassignment there's so many different things that we need to discuss and that we need to ensure that workers are protected as well so hopefully yeah. we'll get there you know and if you ever need any help please do let me know always here to help as well you know Absolutely. yeah yeah um, if people want to find you or they want to find you on instagram or find out any about more about your work that you do casper where can they find you so if you search up www.beacons.com slash transform yeah. um that's just the kind of landing page for the Transform project. In January, um, the report will be going up on there as well. So you can go on to, if you search, if you search that up, you'll be able to find the report and guidelines for music venues. Yeah. Um, and then on Instagram, we're just at Transform Music. Um, so you can find Transform on there as well and keep up to date. But even though I'm awful with social media, I'm really rubbish. Don't I'm work. good at it. I'm gonna post some memes and stuff, but I'm really bad at the professional side of marketing. So um <laughs> understandable. Well, at least you're honest and, and there might be some trans listeners that would love to connect with you, you know. It's nice to have that community. And also I'll leave the description, your bio in the description below with all these links in as well. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been amazing. Thank you. Good to speak to you. Always great. 
keep um, up the work. Start us soon. Yeah, hundred percent. I will, and don't forget to send us all the bits and pieces. We need to catch up again. I've got some things to share with you in the new year as well. So let's definitely have another catch up. Yeah, let's have a catch up soon. Totally. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you and you. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.